Welcome back to our BAD 556 lightweight rifle build. In the last part we showed you how to install the ejection port cover on the upper receiver and you need to do that before you install the barrel. But the very first thing that we want to do before installing the barrel itself is we want to check the headspace. And the headspace is how your bolt face interfaces with a cartridge in the chamber once it's completely locked and closed. And this is critical. We normally recommend having a competent gunsmith check your headspace for you with the bolt that you intend to use with your barrel before having it installed on any upper. But if you wish to do this yourself, we're going to step you through the process on how to do that. So the very first thing you want to do, if you have a bolt carrier group that's already assembled. We need to disassemble the bolt carrier group. You can do that by either using one of the small Allen keys provided with your lower receiver or a pair of needle nose pliers. Just remove the firing pin, retaining pin, and that'll drop out the firing pin. Then we're going to push the bolt to the rearward. And then on top, this is the cam pin. We need to rotate this so that it's in line with the gas key. And then we should be able to just drop it out. Once the cam pin is out, we can go ahead and remove the bolt from the carrier. We can set the carrier to the side. The last thing we need to do is we need to remove the extractor claw from the bolt. In order to do that, there's one pin that just runs from one side to the other. To do that, we're going to use a 3 30 seconds punch. The extractor claw has a little bit of spring pressure on it, so you just want to press down on the back of the extractor claw, and then with your 3 30 second punch, we're just going to press on the pin. The pin will pop out and the punch will go through and it'll still be holding the extractor claw in place. We'll go ahead and set the pin to the side and then slowly remove your punch. And there is your extractor claw and in this channel. If you're using a used bolt, this is a good time to make sure that you don't have any metal or brass shavings from firing or any carbon that has built up inside here. You can get that cleaned out. So we'll go ahead and set the extractor claw to the side. And we'll take the barrel. And before we put a headspace gauge in there, we want to make sure that there's no debris in the chamber that could give you a false read. The gauges are very, very precise. So you can run either a patch, uh, a bore brush. In this instance, I'm just going to use a quick bore snake just to swab the, the chamber out. So once we're sure we have no debris left over inside the chamber, we then want to actually check the headspace. In this instance, we left the extractor plunger in, so there's still going to be a little bit of spring pressure on there, but that's okay. We can use a punch to rotate the bolt. So what we're going to do, we'll take our headspace gauge. When we check them at the factory, we try to keep them within a 1.4656 to a 1.4666. So we're gonna take our 1.4656 gauge and we're gonna drop it into the barrel. We'll then take the bolt Slide that in. 
And then, using a punch or a dowel rod, stick it into the cam pin hole and try and rotate the bolt closed. If you're able to rotate the bolt closed, that means that it's closed on the go gauge, which is good. You want it to close on your go gauge. You can go ahead and rotate the bolt out. We'll remove the 1.4656 gauge. And then we want to check it against our measured no-go, which in this case is a 1.4666. Go ahead and gently drop it into the chamber. Make sure it seats fully. Take the bolt. Lower it in. And then we take our punch, press against the extractor plunger, and then try to close the bolt. If it doesn't close, That means that the barrel is good to go with the bolt that you intend to use. There are multiple different manufacturers of headspace gauges. Each of them have their own tolerances. If you do wind up having a bolt close on a no-go gauge, this could be for a couple of different reasons. Different manufacturers of bolts have different tolerances. Different manufacturers of Barrels and barrel extensions have different tolerances. So there's always going to be a slight variance in between. The one thing you never want to have, even if it was to close on this 4666 gauge, that's still good, even up to a 4676. On an AR-15 platform, you never want to have your bolt close on a one 0.4696 gauge. That is considered field and that's considered to be out of spec and unsafe to use. But anything below that is still safe. So in this instance, in this instance with this bolt that we're using for this barrel, it matches the headspace that we've tested at the factory. Now that we've checked the headspace and we know that it's safe, we can go ahead and reassemble our bolt. So we'll take our bolt and the extractor claw, put those back together. Go ahead and press down against the spring and take the extractor claw pin. And line it up. And as you're pressing on the extractor claw, you should be able to just slide the pin through. So we want to make sure that once we've inserted the pin, that it's inserted equally on both sides and that you don't have one side sticking out further than the other. Then we'll go ahead and reassemble the bolt. Make sure the extractor claw side is going to be pointing towards the vented portion on the bolt carrier. Take our cam pin and we're going to insert it into the rear. And that should just drop right in. We'll rotate it again so that this is now perpendicular to the gas key. And we'll pull that out. Take our firing pin. should just fall right in the back of the receiver. And then we just take the firing pin retaining pin and we insert it back on that side. Just 
check the function of your bolt. Make sure everything is where it should be. And you can check the protrusion of the firing pin with the bolt in the locked position. So that's with it all the way back. And then you'll just press against the firing pin to see if it pops through in the middle. If it doesn't, you may have issues with light strikes on your primer or misfires. That completes checking our headspace and reassembly of our bolt. Join us in the next video and I'll show you how to install your barrel on the upper receiver.